All right, everybody, we need to talk. We need to talk about sensitivity specs and manufacturers that rate them so abhorrently wrong that it is misleading to you in not only the power that you need, but the dynamic capability of your stereo system. Over the last two years, I've tested, I don't know the exact number, but it's probably around 150 different speakers. And out of those, I would say that maybe 10% are within about one to two dB of the actual manufacturer's rated sensitivity spec. Many manufacturers rate their sensitivity in any number of ways. Some rate them with an in-room sensitivity. So they say, hey, if you put the speaker in the room, then this is what the sensitivity is gonna be, but they don't tell you a frequency range. Some will take the highest SPL from a given range, say 80 Hertz to 20 kilohertz, and they'll say, oh, there's our sensitivity. Others will provide some kind of weighting and they'll do an average. They'll wave a microphone around in space and they'll say, this is our average sensitivity with B weighting or A weighting applied. Now that's much more rare. Some provide you with a sensitivity based on anechoic measurements, which is how I do it and how most other reviewers do it and how it really should be done. Most manufacturers aren't providing you with an accurate sensitivity specification. That little number they have slapped on the side of their box or that number they have in their marketing page on their product's website. Those are off by three to, I've seen as much as 12 dB. I mean, they're, they're saying that this speaker is this sensitive and you would only need this little bit of power or it's gonna be super dynamic. And that's the problem. It's one thing to assume that you're gonna have a dynamic sound system that has slam and punch and attack because it has higher sensitivity. Most of the time, there is some truth to that. Like pro audio drivers, that's, that's pretty true. But unfortunately, the real issue is that their sensitivity spec is so overinflated that that whole notion of dynamic range is BS. And honestly, it's pretty aggravating to me because I constantly see people say, well, this speaker has higher sensitivity, so it's gonna sound better. If I'm telling you, you can't really trust a manufacturer, then the obvious question you would have is, well, who can you trust? Well, you can trust me. You can trust Audioholics, Soundstage Network, Stereophile, Audio Science Review, Napier Lopez, who worked, I think, for the nextweb.com. Our reviews are providing you specifications based on a set of metrics that we tell you in advance. So even if we don't provide you with our sensitivity rating in the same exact manner, at least we're telling you how we do it. I think most of us do provide sensitivity in the same manner, except for stereophile. I think theirs is a little bit different, but I digress. The way that I provide sensitivity is based on the CEA 2034 standard, which is to take the on-axis response at 2.83 volts at one meter, referenced, I should say, to one meter. I then take the average SPL from 300 hertz to three kilohertz, and that's what I base my sensitivity spec on. So let me give you a couple quick examples of how I provide sensitivity. Here's an example of the KEF reference one meta that I reviewed a few months back. What we have here in the dash line is the average sensitivity, and it is over 300 hertz to three kilohertz at zero degrees. Zero degrees is the on-axis response in black. This orange box highlights the 300 hertz to three kilohertz region, and you can see that dashed line pretty much rides right in between it. So the average sensitivity for this speaker, based on the specification that I'm providing you, 82.5 dB. Now, the good thing about this speaker is it's pretty linear out of the box. So even if I didn't say it was between 300 and three kilohertz, I could probably just say it's from about 80 hertz to maybe 16 kilohertz. It's pretty much right along the 82 to 83 dB sensitivity. What do you do when you have a speaker that is very wildly non-linear? Here's such an example. This is the JBL Stage A120. The dotted line here shows you I'm rating sensitivity at 83 dB. And you're thinking, okay, well, that's kind of crazy. Well, again, 300 hertz to three kilohertz. JBL rates the speaker at 86 dB sensitivity. Now, I don't know how they're getting that unless they're looking at this portion right up here and saying, hey, for the most part, it's around 86 dB. Now that you've seen how I provide my sensitivity, 
what I've done is I've actually gone through and I've called all my measurements in the past year. I put them into a table and then I went through and started looking at the manufacturer specifications and I've taken the delta. Each bar represents the delta between the manufacturer spec and what I measured. If the bar is above zero dB, that means that's how high over my sensitivity spec they are rating their spec. If it's negative, then that means that they are underrating their sensitivity. What I've also done is provided you some guidelines in the dashed red, plus or minus two dB. So for me personally, I'm just gonna say if the manufacturer is within that for average sensitivity, I'm okay with that. It's not great, but I'm okay with that. Anything beyond those realms to me is there's a problem with what the manufacturer has provided. And you see a lot of those cases here. So let's just jump to this one right here, the Atlantic Technology 8600 EC center channel. Their manufacturer spec is 4.6 dB higher than what I measured. They rate it at, I think it's 93 dB and I pull mine at 89 dB. Let's go to this one. This is the Focal 1000 IW LCR6. Theirs is 4.1 dB higher than my measurement. Jamo, one of the worst offenders, or Yamo, I should say, S803, theirs is 6.4 dB higher. The Yamo C93, theirs is 4 dB higher. And then if we keep going down the line, what you wind up running into is a whole lot of Klipsch. Klipsch 5.2 for the Forte 4, 4.5 for the Heresy 4, 5.5 for the 5000F, 8.9 for the 500C2, and man, we just keep going. So Klipsch rates theirs in a very different manner. They rate their sensitivity based off of 2pi in room. So 2pi means that you're automatically adding six decibels. They're adding a boundary. In room is gonna add anywhere from three to six decibels as well. So their sensitivity is already off by roughly 9 dB on average because that's how they rate their sensitivity. But I will give it to, to Klipsch. At least they're telling us how they're rating their sensitivity. So what you can do is when you see a Klipsch sensitivity rating, take at least 6 dB off the top, at least. If not, 9. Maybe even 12. And that's how we get to cases like this where you have almost 11 dB higher rated sensitivity than what I've measured. I'll keep going down here. I see a Parts Express Copperhead that was 4.6 dB higher. 5.9 dB higher. And the question you're probably asking yourself if you're cynical, how do I know that my measurements are correct? Well, I'm using a calibrated mic and I also have a secondary calibrated mic, calibrated both for SPL and for frequency response. Two totally different mics, two totally different settings. One is permanently attached to my Clipple near fill scanner. The other one is an Earthworks M23 that I use for outdoor measurements. And over the course of the last two years, that's been about a year and a half since I've owned the Clipple Nearfield Scanner, I have conducted countless measurements using both outdoor measurements and my Clipple Nearfield Scanner indoors for various reasons. And the measurements between the two mics are always within like half a dB, if not dead on the exact same. They are fully calibrated, no issues there. The issue is that manufacturers are providing their specifications in any number of ways and very few of them tell you how they're doing it. So, as I said earlier, they may take an average SPL over a different range. They may take the highest SPL. They may take in room, which makes no sense to me. But what we need to be looking at for apples to apples is anechoic. And how do you get that? Well, again, either through me, through Audioholics, Soundstage Network, or Audio Science Review. If I don't have the measurements or one of those other outlets do not have the measurements for the speaker that you're interested in. Don't just trust the manufacturer. Email them. Tell them what you need, which is you need the sensitivity specified on axis 2.83 volts reference to one meter from the sensitivity region of 300 hertz to three kilohertz. You need an average sensitivity or better yet, Ask them to provide you the actual on-axis frequency response and any other measurements that they can provide. If they cannot provide you, if they cannot provide you with the on-axis frequency response SPL, don't buy their product. Do you know how easy it is to provide you with the on-axis response? This is something that you, yes, you can do maybe today, maybe tomorrow. It's relatively easy. All you need is a $99 microphone from Mini DSP and free REW software to perform a quasi anechoic measurement. So you would just gate the response 
and you would say, oh, here's the sensitivity. You just got to make sure that you measure it 2.83 volts, one meter away. But truthfully, if somebody can build a speaker, they should be able to measure the sensitivity in a meaningful way, a meaningful way, not just some random number that doesn't make any sense. Because the problem is you all out there will see a speaker that has high sensitivity and you'll think it's going to have dynamics. And you'll also think I don't need a large amplifier to drive it. Then when you get it home, you think, oh, that has dynamics. Well, it doesn't. But the real problem is, man, why do I have to keep turning up the volume? I thought this was supposed to be 96 dB sensitive, but it doesn't do anything better than my other speaker that was, turns out, 85 dB sensitive. And with that said, I'm done with this video. You've been warned. Pay attention to what they're telling you and trust no one except for me. Wow, how hypocritical. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe, like, thumbs up if you haven't already. And to those of you who want to support what I'm doing here, please consider joining my Patreon. I'll have the link in the description below. Talk to you all later. Peace.